Hey guys, so today's video is going to be another baby update. This is going to be my 13 week pregnancy update. So if you've been following along my baby's journey and my pregnancy updates, technically this should be my 12th baby update, but I think it would just make more sense to name this my 13th week update because as I'm sitting here filming this, I'm already 13 weeks and one day. I'm still gonna like recap all of last week and everything and how I'm feeling and everything, but I think it just makes sense to just call it what I am ready, even though I barely just turned 13 weeks. I think it just makes more sense. I don't even know if that whole explanation made sense, but this is my 13 week pregnancy update. If you guys have seen my last video, it was probably the hardest or one of the hardest videos I've had to film. If you haven't seen it, you should probably watch it before you watch this one because this video is also going to be about all of that stuff. And my last baby update, which was my, it was titled my 11 week update, but it was basically 11 to 12 week update. So basically we had gone into the doctors on Wednesday, February 20th. We had gone into an ultrasound appointment. The ultrasound appointment was for genetic screening, which is not mandatory when you are pregnant. You don't have to have any of that testing done. It wasn't any invasive testing or anything. It was just basically ultrasound where they just look at everything and see if everything looks okay. Then it's followed by just simple blood work to see for you know Down syndrome and all of that stuff. So it's not mandatory by any means. We weren't pressured into getting any of this screen done. It was just our preference to get it done. We had it done with Aurora. So we just decided to get it done again. So we had gone into that appointment. I went into it very happy because, you know, that's another ultrasound. You get to see your baby again. And I'm gonna kind of just recap my last video. So you can skip through this part if you want to because I'm gonna kind of just, like I said, recap because I was kind of a mess in that video and I feel like I didn't explain things properly. I'd gone in for that genetic screening ultrasound, went into it very happy. I noticed the ultrasound tech was really focusing on the baby's head and brain and skull. I didn't really think too much of it because I thought it was normal because obviously it's for, it's a genetic screening so I know they want to be thorough and look at everything. But I knew something was wrong when she said that she wanted the doctor to come in and take a look too. The doctor had come in and the moment I knew something was very wrong was when he finished up the ultrasound and everything and he said, we need to talk. It tells us basically that the baby's brain doesn't look like it developed the way it should. The baby's brain didn't split the way it should. So in the front of the baby's brain, it should have been split into two parts. But instead of two parts, it's just one. And it was really heartbreaking to hear that. I broke down crying and it was a really hard day. I don't wanna recap everything of that day because I kind of explained it in my last video. But long story short, we saw a genetic counselor. We talked about everything and they talked about, I don't wanna give you guys wrong terms. So let me look this up really quick. We had talked about two different procedures. So there was a CVS and an amniocentesis. I talked about those two different procedures. They are similar, but they're also different and they're done at different stages in your pregnancy. So since I was 12 weeks, it was recommended by our doctor that we get the CVS done. It was by no means um, mandatory or we never felt pressured to get the procedure done. We were aware that there is risk of miscarriage with the procedure, but we just talked it over and we did research. We were informed. We just came to the conclusion that getting the procedure was the best thing for us just so that we can get the answers that we need and we can just prepare ourselves and know what we're preparing ourselves for and just for you know future pregnancies basically we just went over everything and we just felt like the, pre the procedure was best for us after that appointment with my ob on the 20th i had gone in for the procedure the cvs procedure on the 22nd and the procedure is called the chronic 
villus sampling. I'm probably I'm not saying that wrong, but it's basically CVS procedure. Before we even got the procedure done, we got second opinion with the specialist to see if he even sees anything wrong, if he even recommends the procedure. So before we got it done, we got a second opinion. He saw the same thing that the doctor saw, but he also saw more. What they're calling it, and this is not a 100% diagnosis yet because we don't get the final results in like 10 to 14 days. So we'll either get it this week or next week. What they're saying it is, is Holioprosenvali, HPE. What it is basically, I'm going to just read it straight off my phone because I don't want to give you guys any misinformation. But it's a cephalic disorder in which the brain, so it's the front of the brain, it fails to develop into two hemispheres. So normally the forebrain is formed and the face begins to develop in the fifth and sixth weeks of human pregnancy. The condition can be either mild or severe. In most cases, it's not compatible with life and it results in fatal death in the uterus. So in most cases, the baby doesn't make it during the pregnancy. And when the brain doesn't divide like it should, it can also, since it's the baby's forebrain, it's in front of the baby's face, it also can cause defects in the baby's facial structure. So when we were given the ultrasound by the specialist, he also said this is what he really thinks it is. He saw it looks like the baby's nose is absent. So our baby may not have a nose. Um, it looked like the baby also has a cleft which now that I think about it, that kind of makes sense to me because in a few ultrasounds ago, it looked like the baby was sticking out its tongue. And at the time, I was like, oh my goodness, like that is so cute. But when the specialist was doing the ultrasound, it also looked like the baby's tongue was sticking out. And now that I know that the baby possibly has a cleft, I'm thinking it may be severe and that's why the baby's tongue is out. So due to that, and we also saw another genetics counselor that day and we spoke with her over everything. We decided to go along with it. The way the procedure works is first they kind of numbed up my stomach with a shot and then they went in, they were doing an ultrasound at the same time as this so I was able to watch the procedure on the screen and so that way they can see where to inject the needle so that the baby's safe and everything. They put a needle inside my uterus which basically gave me a giant contraction because the uterus is a muscle and they're poking it with a needle. So it was, I wouldn't say it was like extremely painful where I was like screaming but it was, it definitely hurt. It just felt like they gave me one ginormous contraction. Kind of jiggled around a little bit in there and they pulled out some samples of the placenta and what they're going to do with that sample is they're going to look at all of the baby's chromosomes to see if the baby's missing chromosomes the baby has extra chromosomes basically they're just going to look at this sample and pinpoint what's going on with the baby so i'm sure since they're looking at all of our baby's chromosomes i'm sure once i get a call with those results we will also find out if this baby is a boy or a girl so now i kind of just want to talk about my feelings i'm okay for the most part i obviously have you know moments where i just need to cry the other day i was getting the girls lunch and they were sitting down at the table eating their lunch and i just was overcome with sadness and i just ran to the bathroom and i bawled my eyes out for like 10 minutes so i have moments like that where I'm just really sad and I just really need a good cry. Um, I'm not depressed or anything, I wouldn't say. I feel like I'm pretty okay. I'm I'm as good as I, I can be, despite everything. I do not want an abortion. And I know it's been a huge topic on my last video because I didn't really... I just basically said that the doctor recommended it. I don't want the doctors to, you know, obviously they can't force me into a decision. They can always give me recommendations. But my personal feeling, 
I can't do that. I, I can't. Yeah, I just want to make that clear because a lot of... I did get some negativity on my last video, which I knew was going to happen because I'm putting myself out there. I'm sharing my baby's story. And I, and I know this topic can be very uncomfortable for some people to hear and to talk about. It's a very touchy subject for some people because I know there's other moms out there with children with disabilities and they've gone through it. I know this is a very touchy subject and everybody has their own views, everybody has their own opinion. Not everybody believes in God and there's just so many different people have views and that's perfectly okay. But I just want to keep this all positive. This is still my baby. I still love this baby. My plan is to carry this baby for as long as I can. If the specialist and the doctors are right about this disorder, most don't make it throughout the pregnancy. And if they do make it through the pregnancy, most don't make it past a few hours, some are a few days, but it almost always ends in a loss. I'm not giving up on this baby. I'm also preparing myself. I know you can't really prepare yourself for something like that, but I'm just I'm just aware. So like I said, I do not want an abortion. I want to make that very clear. My plan is to carry this baby for as long as I can. I don't want to spend every day sad. Like I said, I have my moments, but I don't want to be sad all the time because I know the baby feels that and I know the baby can tell when you're stressed. I still want to celebrate this baby. I still want to know if this is my son or my daughter. I still want to announce that to you guys. If and when I do deliver this baby, I would love to meet him or her. I would love to hold him or her. As for my husband, I don't want to speak on his part, but he's very, very supportive. Oh yeah, that's my feelings, my thoughts. Every day is a blessing with this baby and I'm praying to God for some miracle but I know God doesn't always heal the sick and though I don't understand it right now I know in time maybe I'll get some answers I know this is a very touchy subject for some people but I just I really want to share my baby's story I still want to celebrate this baby it's still a life that's everything that I wanted to talk to in today's update thank you guys so much for all of your prayers your thoughts I love reading all of your guys's stories of your miracle babies and it's really comforting to know I'm not alone through this. Thank you for listening.